Hello, it's John Dillard with His CPA PC. Our website is hiscpa.com. We're a Christian CPA firm. So if you're thinking about submitting an offer and compromise, there's lots of things that you'd want to consider before you go down that road. First and foremost, although what you hear in the news is that the IRS is friendlier, uh, they're not unfriendly. They're people just like you and me. However, the processes of getting stuff to the the IRS and the administrative details involved in actually processing an offer and compromise remain much more convoluted and complex than one might originally be led to believe by some of the hype that you might be hearing. A typical offer and compromise I would suggest would take about 8 to 14 months with many of those having to be taken up on appeal. The last statistic I saw said that about 20 to 25 percent of all offer and compromises are accepted. Our percentage is much higher than that because we work very hard to make sure that the only offers that we submit are those we think we have a dramatically good chance of processing satisfactorily. Uh, if you owe an amount less than twenty to thirty thousand, probably an offering compromise is not your best bet. If you owe an amount such uh, in that twenty to thirty thousand dollars or less, perhaps looking to pay the tax and interest in full, dealing with a friendly lender borrowing the money from a bank or family member is a much better opportunity for you in paying that tax and interest in full by throwing yourself at the mercy of the IRS requesting and coming up for probable cause for penalty abatement for the IRS to consider is often a much better option. In fact, we've done that for one of our clients in the past and received tens of thousands of dollars of penalty abatement by paying the tax and interest in full. Uh, and submitting an offer and compromise, there's several rules that you need to always keep in mind. First, all of your tax Returns have to be filed. You can't have any unfiled returns, and I would suggest for all taxpayers, you want to make sure that not only they're all filed, that one of the rules of submitting an offer compromise is your taxes have to be current. So if you're behind in your 2011 taxes, for example, if that were your current tax year, then you'd have to get those taxes relative to this year current first before you could actually submit the offer and compromise. So essentially what you're trying to do is to get all your financial ducks in a row before you go to submit the offer and compromise to the IRS. Uh, the last part of the vehicle of the determining whether you're a good candidate for the offer and compromise or not is, is evaluating uh, what the IRS reduce your tax bill. For example, if you owed $100,000 or so and your net worth and your extra cash flows over the next four or five years were 40 to 50,000, then the IRS would be inclined to reduce your tax bill from the 100 down to the 40 to 50. Uh, but it's a very finite, detailed process, including very detailed and finite forms to the IRS and very specific tax rules uh, regarding that. Uh, personally, I've not met anybody that's ever submitted an offer and compromise on their own, and I would not suggest it would be anything that you'd want to do to consider in processing one on your own. I think your chances of likelihood would fall from the 20-25% likelihood if you used just an average tax preparer to pretty much near nothing if you represented yourself. But again, with the IRS offer and compromise process, the IRS will reduce your tax bill, the total tax penalties and interest to a combination of your net worth and your excess cash flows. In all substantive and important tax representation issues, I recommend you work with a tax professional, find a CPA who's well versed in such issues. And as always, we're here to help. This is John Dillard CPA with hiscpa.com. Thank you.